Hi, everyone. OK, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Um, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. And uh, I think we can now kick start this session. Um, so this will be on cloud. And I'd like to introduce our first speaker soon. Um, we will be three presentations, and then we'll have five minutes Q&A after each session, and we'll be through Slido. But now, let's introduce Thomas and Ian as they speak on Microsoft Azure subscription. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to this session and our talk. Uh, so I'm Thomas Lazowskis, and I'm a research computing team lead at the Turing. And together with my colleague Ian, we're going to talk about the RC tab. It's our own developed Azure, Microsoft Azure subscription management framework. So research computing team is part of the REG team, research engineering group at the Turing. And what we do, we not only do this cloud management for our researchers, we also help our researchers to develop, to develop their solutions, as well as work on our own projects, such as our CTAB. To start with, I would like to talk about why cloud. So Turing is, is in a quite fortunate position because we have access to quite few tier two HPC machines in the UK. However, for more general compute needs, we, tend, we chose to be cloud first. And there are a couple of reasons for that. So one of the key benefits of using cloud is that researchers can rent the equipment, what they need almost instantaneously. It this proven particularly important during the COVID-19 times when the, all, the, all the supply chains got disrupted and it was really difficult, not even to get something installed, but even to order, and this price has just skyrocketed. Also, many of the support duties that are quite burdensome are taken out of our hands. So we don't need to worry about the installation and maintenance of the hardware, and sometimes even the un underlying OS. Also, cloud platforms provide hundreds of various tools and solutions to researchers. So it helps researchers to focus on their research rather than thinking um, about the computational environments. And also, cloud platforms provide easy and secure ways of sharing research data, which also proven to be very important during the hybrid and remote working. So some of the highlights, some of the projects that we were able to support at the Turing, and because we were using commercial cloud providers are Crop, which is a digital twin of the growing underground's underground farm. We also were able to develop Turing Data Safe Haven, which is an open source framework for creating secure environments to analyze sensitive data, as well as Project Odysseus, which was one of the key responses from the Turing during the COVID-19 times, which combined multiple data sources and provided a cohesive view of the city level of activity or busyness. <coughs> um, so all this good, uh, but our talk today is about the, how do we manage all these cloud resources at the Turing. So in the standard scenario, when a researcher or a group of researchers, everything is very straightforward. You take your credit card, you go to one of the cloud providers, say, please give us some services, you get billed regularly, and everything works quite well. Things get more complicated, for example, when in the situations that we have at the Turing, when we have hundreds of researchers requiring hundreds of accounts, and all this usage must be paid by one organization. And most of the cloud providers provide a management system to do so. But then we have other re requirements, such as we want to make sure that researchers, they don't use too much of our cloud. So we want to put budgetary restrictions. And also we want to set them, OK, your budgets are available until a certain point in time. And we apply use it or lose it policies. And this is where things get complicated, and not every cloud provider provides such a system. And to make things even more interesting, some of the researchers, they said, OK, we understand that you have limited amount of money to pay for the compute. So how about we come together and help you? We're going to pay partially for the compute usage. So we need to create a system that would support these kind of scenarios. 
and uh, over six years since we've been using Microsoft Azure mainly, we had to change the underlying management system three times. So it means that every time the system changes, we have to cre recreate all the tools needed to support this fairly complicated model. And just to iterate, none of the systems were able to provide all the needed functionality to us. Uh, for example, if you are familiar, familiar with the Education Hub management system on Azure, one of the things that you can do that we previously used this one is that you can set budgets and expiry dates. However, everything is done through the web front end. And there is no notification service, no API, and it's proven to be it's <laughs> that it takes a lot of management time from us. And then what we did is that well, you, we use our REC skills and develop some of the apps to, to help us with it. So we develop, developed one of the tools called Educrawler, which, which crawls the Education Hub portal, collects all the information in the database, and an Edunotice system that takes an action on the, based on the, the collected information. So if you're using Education Hub at your organization or your team, please see these tools and just don't make the mistakes that we did. <laughs> And recently, we moved to a new management system, again, which called Enterprise Agreement. And this system differs from the previous one, is that we have a chance to use multiple admin accounts. However, we cannot set hard budgets or expiry dates, which is the core of our model. However, we have an API with which we can implement all the needed functionality for us. And my colleague, Ian, will guide us through the development process. Thanks, Thomas. So uh, a very brief aside about the uh, organization of Azure. It has this hierarchical structure where um, you have subscriptions at the top. They're the sort of uh, orange keys. And uh, you have zero or more resource groups inside a subscription and zero or more resources inside a resource group. And resources are kind of all the things that researchers typically uh, like want to pay for, so virtual machines, databases, uh, static IP addresses, more or less anything you might want to buy on Azure um, is a resource. And you can apply sort of policies such as access policies at, at the higher levels and they all apply to the children. And spending um, all happens at the kind of resource level but you can aggregate it. So the kind of cost, if you like, of a subscription is the cost of all the, the resources underneath it. And we, we tend to create one subscription per uh, research project and they're the kind of key organizational unit for us because they have this nice property where you can uh, turn a subscription off if the project is spending too much money and it will uh, stop all the resources but without uh, any loss of data, which uh, as far as I'm aware, you can't do at uh, any of the other kind of uh, organizational levels in, in Azure. Uh, so let's talk about like how you might turn off a subscription uh, that's kind of spent too much money. So uh, one option is through the Azure portal. This is an example of the sort of subscription overview page for a subscription called T-Rex. And you'll see that, um, that there is a cost management menu on the left-hand side, and there is a, a spending, a current and predicted spending uh, graph in the middle. So Azure does give you some tools to uh, like monitor your spending. But um, the budgets, you'll see there's like a, a budget item in the menu. Uh, those just alert you when you've spent too much money. They don't uh, like enforce hard limits. So uh, you know, one option if you only want to use the you know what Azure provides is to set up budget alerts and uh, like manually come here and click cancel subscription or use the Azure CLI to uh, to turn off subscriptions when they've gone over budget. And obviously, this doesn't scale well to uh, hundreds of subscriptions like we, we typically have active at any one time at, at the churn. So to recap, the, like, the main motivation of RCTAB and maybe the main appeal uh, if your organization uses Azure is it allows us to enforce hard budgets on subscriptions. Um, so let's talk about how, how you might build a system that automatically turns off subscriptions. Well, Azure has a, uh, a Python software development kit, the uh, Azure Python SDK. And uh, within that, there is a, a cancel method, 
uh, you can see the docs for it here. And so, you know, the long and the short of it is you call the cancel method uh, from some Python code, RC tab is all written in Python, and you turn off your subscription. Obviously, you'll need somewhere to host uh, this code because you don't always want to be running it like, locally from your laptop. So uh, where better to host an Azure management system than on Azure itself? So we can deploy our code uh, as a function in an Azure function app. And the controller function uh, you see on the screen now, function apps are Azure's serverless compute offering. So they're kind of uh, comparable to AWS lambdas or Google Cloud Platform functions, if you've used either of those. They're one of the more minimal types of computing resource, so they're uh, very easy to deploy, and they don't really have any kind of you know, maintenance cost. And it also allowed us to isolate the code that turns off subscriptions, which requires kind of higher uh, levels of permissions than we wanted to give the entire application. And we weren't as interested in uh, things like scalability or um, low cost, which uh, some people are, are more focused on when they use function apps. And so our function app needs to know which subscriptions to turn off. So uh, we added a web server, which um, we deployed as a Azure app service. An app service is also like a managed offering. So uh, there's very little kind of ongoing maintenance work from us. And it's very easy to deploy. We uh, build a Docker image. We push that to Docker Hub. Azure picks up that something has changed on, on Docker Hub, and, and that's it. Your, your application is deployed. Uh, App services and function apps are, are pretty much stateless, and so you know we need somewhere to keep a list of subscriptions we would like turned on or off. So uh, we also have a database. It's Azure DB for Postgres, which is a fairly expensive um, uh, cloud database, but it's also very convenient for the same reason that app services and, and function apps are convenient. And then to work out what should be on or off at any particular time, uh, we added two extra functions. One of them, the status function, uh, collects the state, so more or less just on or off or permanently deleted of all the uh, subscriptions that we have at the Turing. And another one, the usage function, that collects uh, you know, basically what every function has been spending over the last day. And then uh, we need to tell our web server uh, how much each subscription should be able to spend, and uh, maybe if it should have some like expiry date, a common one is the end of the financial year. So we added uh, the RC tab command line interface, which lets you uh, set and get budgets, uh, amongst other things. And up to now, we've discussed uh, things that have made our lives easier as kind of administrators of Azure at the Turing. But the data we've been collecting about um, you know, uh, usage and the state of the uh, subscription is also useful to you know researchers and other users at the Turing. So um, we built a front end which also uses um, single sign-on. So as long as you have a Turing uh, account, you can log in very very easily to RC tab. And we send email reminders using SendGrid, which is a, a third-party email API. <laughs> And so kind of at this point, uh, we don't only have automation, we also have something that's kind of a, a wider benefit uh, to the Turing community. And the feedback we've had has been very positive and uh, people have said that they found our front end to be uh, simpler and less intimidating than, than Azure portal is. And so this is the kind of architecture as things stand at the moment. And uh, it's been like this since we started um, using RC tab full time to manage subscriptions uh, in May this year. Uh, so uh, I'll just give a very quick mention to some of the kind of uh, libraries and technologies we use to make developing and deploying RC tab nice and easy. So uh, you can run the entire thing locally, uh, maybe except for the emails. But yeah, you can basically run everything locally. If you have trouble installing things with poetry, then the web server and uh, the database uh, have been containerized. So development setup is pretty straightforward. And uh, we use pre-commit, which is the, the orange road sign there to basically run linting and formatting and type checking every time you do a git commit. And then when you open a pull request, we run all the unit tests uh, in GitHub Actions. And if they pass and you know you merge into the main branch, then we automatically deploy RC tab. So uh, there's kind of very little um, developer involvement needed to like 
uh, deploy a new release. Uh, so this is kind of how the, the life cycle of, of what happens when a researcher says to us, uh, you know, we want X thousand pounds to do some research. Uh, they send in a, a request kind of to our help desk and assuming we are happy with that, we use the Azure CLI or the Azure portal to create the subscription, which then gives us the subscriptions a unique ID. We, we do an RC tab approval, which is basically saying the subscription ID can spend up to this amount and run for this long. And then uh, during that sort of approval period, uh, researchers and other people added to the subscription get uh, budget reminders and they get expiry remi uh, reminders a month, a week, and a, a day before the subscription expires. And uh, if it does expire, uh, researchers have between uh, 30 days and three months to basically ask for a top up or an extension. So um, th this is a good way, you know, even if they ignore the expiry reminders, they don't immediately lose all their data. There's the chance for them to, you know, find some more uh, money somewhere and reactivate the subscription and RC tab will, will do that for you as well. Uh, so what next? Uh, so uh, RC tab has like more features than we've mentioned here and we're in the process of, of adding more. But I think, you know, what's most important to us is to get it into the hands of people who uh, might find it useful. So uh, it isn't, uh, the repos aren't public yet, but uh, our long-term plan is to make this open source. And before then, if you think it would be useful, uh, drop us an email at researchcomputeplatforms, uh, all one word, at turing.ac.uk, and we'd be very happy to share it with you. Uh, thanks, thanks to uh, Pam and Fede who have worked on this, and uh, thanks for listening. So if there are any questions, thank you. Okay, top one. Uh, it sounds like it would be helpful for cloud providers to offer hard usage limits. Yes, I agree. Do you have any insight into why this is not offered? I, I think you might, Thomas, have actually asked Microsoft. If, have you ever? Yes, and so some of the management systems, they provide hard limits and some of them don't. So the, what we're using is the standard system, which just doesn't provide it. They said that it's in development and something to look for. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, the next question is, what is the origin of the name RC tab? Well, RC stands for research computing. Tab is something that you open in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Ian? Thanks. Uh, how does the actual payment work? Um, do you get periodic invoices? Um, I, I think there's the, there may be the option to prepay, correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas, certainly I think we, uh, prepay for reserved instances. So we say we, you know, we kind of want to reserve this many virtual machines um, to to be used at kind of a, a discounted rate because we're um, kind of c committing to using them in some sense. But uh, I think yes, uh, we get billed monthly for everything else. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yep. That that's correct. <laughs> Uh, would you recommend uh, a loan researcher uses a credit card to acquire cloud resources? Uh, oh, because then that might make them sort of uh, liable for the spending. Well, like with everything else, we would recommend that a loan researcher, they're still part of the organization. So I would say that they should talk with their organization and then get the support needed to sign a contract with the cloud provider so they don't have to put their own credit cards or so. And just to emphasize, our tool that we developed also could be used by loan researchers. <laughs> so if you want to manage your budget and don't want to spend, make sure that you know you don't get a really big <laughs> invoice to your credit card, yeah, please get in touch. Do we have time for one more question? Yeah. Are there similar hard budget solutions for other cloud providers? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I did ask someone that works for Amazon recently, and they said they're not they're not aware of any. I asked that, and uh, I guess the follow up is: Could RC Tab be used or adapted to other cloud providers? Uh, I think uh, if 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 we could gauge the interest, and there was enough, uh, I suspect that it could. 
um, like the overall kind of model of just you know ch checking how much has been spent uh, using a CLI to kind of dictate how much should be spent and for how long. Um, uh, I think it could be applied to other cloud providers. I guess that is uh, contingent on them having some sort of uh, SDK that that lets you you know do that programmatically. Because I, I think previously we've looked at solutions that use Selenium or or some other sort of you know way to interact you know via the browser and in, or to make things that way. And, and obviously that's uh, just inevitably fragile. So this is a lot of time investment into a specific cloud provider. True. Do you worry that you may fall prey to vendor lock-in? Right. Um, so to answer that question, uh, we've been in a fortunate position again. So for five years, we had this sponsorship from Microsoft where they donated a million a year, a million dollars, US dollars a year to use for cloud computing. So we kind of a vendor locked in because people, researchers are more used to, to their environment. However, we are taking the approach that we should be multi-cloud. And then we offer our researchers access to cloud and, and uh, to, to Google Cloud and AWS. So we're trying not to be vendor locked in and just to make sure that we offer services that are fitted to their researchers' needs. Uh, someone has asked how much it costs to keep uh, RCTAB going. Uh, I'm glad you asked because I did look this up last week and um, it's about 130 to 140 pounds a month, but that was because uh, we had some uh, performance issues with the way with like our previous database schema and so we had to upgrade to a more expensive database and as I mentioned um, Postgres uh, for Azure is is quite pricey but I think you could get away actually now with uh, moving back down to the basic tier which I think is 30 or 40 pounds a month and and the storage does like dominate the overall costs so uh, yeah for us about 140 pounds a month but uh, I think you could easily half that or something using the basic database tier. And uh, are there any restrictions on what type of cloud services researchers can use via the system? I think I'm pretty pleased to say there aren't, but I'll, I'll, uh, this is more of a Thomas question. So, Sure. Uh, so that's one of the key reasons why we developed RCTAB, is just to make sure that we can allow researchers to create all the resources that they need. We just make sure that they just don't overspend. The last one, just to make it. <laughs> uh, would you recommend this approach for a university aiming to offer cloud services to researchers? Yes, absolutely. Please get in touch. <laughs> Very happy to share the code. And, may, uh, and I think that this is what the RSC community is about. It's just uh, if we develop something and we think that it could be bene beneficial to other groups, so we would really keen, we are re really keen to share that. All right. Thank you very much.